Look, they aren't gone yet. All right, Professor. It will be as Mr. Alonso requested. You can talk to that blacksmith's assistant whenever you wish to. That is, as long as he is there, because once they come for him from Madrid, this paper will be of no use. Go ahead. The corridor door is open. What I think of the dealer? Do you know that we have had anonymous reports from here and there that strange people come to visit him, and he has connections in the criminal underworld? But I must say, I keep an eye on him, and I haven't caught him in any misconduct. And then you cannot just haul somebody responsible because of who he is friends with. It is easy to believe the town gossip, but where is the proof? You understand? The proof! That's what's missing in these cases. Tangible proof. Like in the case of Francisco Candelas. Yes. No, no, that is an entirely different case. But if there were proof there, maybe it would be a different situation. The French butler is a lord among the lords. I tell you, professor, he holds his nose so high up, it's as if he weren't serving Mr. Alonso, but vice versa. Mr. Alonso, whom I respect deeply for his achievements, knowledge, and birth, once told me what he thinks of sin. He said, that it is poverty that breeds sin in people, need and despair, and it is always the rich who are abused then. Very wise thoughts. I have come to see more clearly since then. I keep one eye on the poor and the other on the rich. You always have to protect those more who have more to lose, right, Professor? Well... <laughs> Believe me, such wisdom is worth more than an excellent cigar. And I really like cigars, you know? Are you Senor Candelas? Yes, I am. But who are you? Some detective? Are you already taking me to Madrid? My name is Samuel Hunt. I am English and I travel the world as an adventurer. I observe and collect. I see. And may I ask why you are here to talk to me? I would like to help you if you can help me. I suspected you were here on business. But I had nothing. Well, I can't give you what I have. Calm down, young man. The situation is simpler than that. What do you want from me? First of all, more accurate information, young Candelas. I am ready to believe that you are innocent, but it is not easy to prove. Are you going to be my lawyer, Mr. Hunt? Perhaps Carmen asked you to be my lawyer? No, not quite. Believe me, it is important for me personally that you be set free soon. This is getting mysterious. Would you tell me where you know me from or what you want from me? I think you must know if I say that in fact, I am in search of the Argon. The Argon? What? In search of the... In search of the Argon? Gee! You'd be the legendary hero who comes one day according to tales to take the curse off our family? Excuse me, but what is so funny about it? <laughs> I, I apologize. It is simply that this is not how I imagined it as a child. 
You know, you're not exactly what a hero looks like in a classical tale. I agree with that, Mr. Candelas, but it also seems this is not a tale at all. Just call me Francisco. I'm not worthy of the Candela's name anymore. Don't talk like this. But I'm not. But this is not so important now. It is more important that I have here before me the man who brings my ancestor's legend alive and the hero who will bring freedom one day. Well, you would need that at the moment, Francisco. Yes, it's true. Because if you don't get me out of here in a short time, I will never teach you the curse of Alcurque. Alcurque? That's the name of the game. According to the tradition, the Moors brought it to Spain hundreds of years ago. They knew it by the name of El Quaquet. Then, thanks to the curse, it was slowly forgotten. I see. I would not like to miss the opportunity to get to know it. Please help me. Let me do everything I can for it. Of course. What are you interested in, Mr. Hunt? I have tried to sniff around in the city. I have discovered a surprising number of details, but you may think they are worth nothing in the absence of your honest confession. Just ask me, Mr. Hunt. I'll answer all your questions. Look, Mr. Hunt, I didn't do it. That sword was important to our family since it was one of my grandfather's masterpieces. But one day my father gave it to Alonso Garcia de la Rica as a present. Perhaps the reasons he gave it to him will never be discovered. Because I'm sure my father did not act of his own accord. I did not see the beautiful weapon for a long time because it was my father who was at Mr. Alonso's beck and call until he died. Then of course I came. I basically worked for him for a few alms. Small maintenance, blacksmith jobs were my tasks quite a lot lately. It was strange to see the sword again. Yes, it is true that I did adore it. The old lord of the castle may have seen it, but also Hugo the butler. There's nothing about it. One day, I also noticed that my grandfather made a mistake in the family coat of arms. Maybe that is why he never sold the sword. True, this mistake with the child's head had never occurred to me before. But, of course, I didn't call the new owner's attention to it. And then I don't know more. Suddenly, there was this Riojo stumping at the door of our house. Mr. Alonso was with him and that playboy, Eugenio. They arrested me. They questioned me. Then they simply locked me up. And now, nobody asks anything. It is interesting to hear what you are saying, Francisco. But I must admit, it doesn't help much. In whose interest could it have been? Who could have stolen the sword? Mr. Alonso had just asked me to prepare the bars on the front windows of the palace. There are bars only protecting the back wall and the rooms on the ground floor. Anyone could break into that house and take the sword. Unfortunately, I don't know if something else was also taken at the same time. But any one of his acquaintances could have done it. There was an old general who never missed a chance to praise my grandfather's work. Since he was deaf, he spoke rather loudly. I myself could clearly hear that he offered almost a fortune. But then there is that cursed Ariaga, the dealer who was a regular visitor in the palace. Or Hugo, the butler. Maybe he is not afraid to lose his job. I have also wondered if perhaps Eugenio or the master himself planned a way to remove me as an obstacle to Carmen. I don't know. There is no way I can know. Yes, I am aware of these reasons. Miss Diaz Palencia told me about everything. She loves you deeply, Francisco. I know. And she can be certain that I love her too. Please tell her that I think of her very often. Will you be seeing her? Of course. She was so kind as to host me. I am staying in the late painter's room. Perfect. Perhaps this way there is someone to look after her. Will you be so kind, Mr. Hunt? You can count on me, Francisco. Look, I cannot give you an unbiased opinion of that man. The two families have not even been talking for years, so we cannot talk about the family in Ariaga's case. He is not married, has no children. He has two apprentices, some maids, and strange visitors. As you must know, we live across from his house. My room window overlooks the shop. 
I have witnessed several times rich clients incognito and shady characters creeping into his place late at night or at midnight. Who knows what he deals in? Do you think an art dealer can be involved in the theft of the work of art? No, I haven't thought of that, but it is absolutely possible. But since I've been sitting here behind the bars, there is no one to watch what happens at the shop. Unless... unless you could do it, or ask my mother to watch. Well, I'd be glad to watch that man, but I believe your mother would be the better candidate. Yes, perhaps you are right. If you get me a pencil and paper, I'll write her a letter. You know, the friendship between the two families was perhaps made in heaven. Even our fathers loved each other like two brothers. True, Salvador lived in England for a long time, but I forgive him this, since otherwise he could not have returned with such an angel, Carmen. We were raised together. We came to know the world together. Our sole fortune is that we are not real siblings because we are free to be lovers. Although this love is burdened with a curse that is heavier than that of the Agon. Recently a rival appeared, none other than the young Eugenio. His only weapon is a piece of paper that Carmen's father signed and in which he gives me two months of life. Because in two months, Carmen will be 21 years old and she will have to marry Mr. Alonso's son. And I will surely kill him. And then myself. I love to listen to his stories, in which either he or someone he knew was the hero. He knew everything, always had something on his mind. He also taught me how to play the trumpet when I was a child, but unfortunately I have no ear for music, Mr. Hunt. However, I was better at painting and drawing than Carmen, even though she has a skillful hand too. Take a look at her embroidery. Salvador was like an uncle to me. I was deeply upset when he died. My mother is the most loving mother in the world. She served her family, husband, and children all her life. I think myself ungrateful that I leave her alone just when she would need my help. This is not what she deserves. My father was always hard on me, but I loved him very much. In the beginning, he was a real slave driver in the workshop, but as I grew up, he changed in my eyes. He became my role model as I began to understand what a treasure rests in his hands and that he was preparing to hand it all over to me, his son. He only told me about the legend of the Agon once he saw that I had changed. The butler? It's impossible for me to get a sense of him. Always reserved, a cold man. Mr. Alonso is satisfied with him and that is what counts. Did you know that he is also the gardener in the palace? It was a pleasant surprise to me. A villain. He calls himself a policeman, but he is only a puppet moved by money and ulterior motives. He took the words of the aristocrats like holy scripture. Perhaps if he had been more impartial, I would have had better chances. He considers the case closed, despite the fact that there isn't a single bit of evidence against me. Sergeant, would you please give me a piece of paper and a pencil to write down a few important things? Important things that the blacksmith has told you? <laughs> Impossible! But there are only a few small things. I would be grateful. Oh, really? Oh, that corrupt nature of his. Now I have to find him a cigar somewhere. Oh, a cigar. <laughs> oh, smells divine. It's yours, but please let me use paper and a pencil. What? Well, all right, all right. You'll find paper and pencil there on the desk. Thank you.
Thank you. Now write my mother saying you are free to enter our place, that she should let you look around my room and watch Ariaga. Be careful and not to lose sight of him. Done. Take her to our house as soon as possible, and tell my mother that I love her very, very much. I am fine. She need not worry about me. I'll do just that, Francisco. Hold out. I'll figure something out. See you later. See you later, Mr. Hunt. I hope you'll succeed.